eyebrows that drew for another trim again. You can see they're quite long. Furry caterpillars that they are. Okay, so brows pretty much done for now. I'm just going to put a little bit more of a foundation on because this is absorbed in a fair bit. Being dry skin, I only put a really light coat on, so I'm just going to put a little bit more on, especially around the under eyes. Um, so again, just with my mixture of the infallible with the lightning drops, central for pale skin. Body Shop do um, lightning drops too, which I've used before. Um, they're not too bad either, and it depends on the blend of foundation you're putting it with as to what's a good combination. I find the one from Australis um, blends really well with the Infallible, whereas the Body Shop one that I've used before, it just didn't. I think it was a little bit too watery. My skin's going through another really dry phase at the moment. It's probably the change of weather. Oh, quite a bit of lash there. And my eye bags are worse than normal because I am a little bit run down as I mentioned earlier. Like, I literally slept a couple days ago all day. Um, I'm naturally a chronic fatigue sufferer um, and tend to have lots of immune problems and reactions to food and skin products and stuff. Yay. <laughs> Makes life difficult sometimes, but we all have our things. Okay, that's a little bit better. So, as a finishing powder, I was using the CoverGirl, it's looking a little bit cracked now, um, Professional Loose Powder. It's meant to be translucent. However, if you look closely, that is not terribly translucent. And again, for albino folk like me, um, it does not come out translucent. You come out like you've been rolling around in a bag of Doritos, pretty much. So, as a replacement, I have been using the Savvy. Again, really cheap. But for the most part, I found their products are actually not too bad. This is a mineral loose powder, and it is a lot more translucent. It's hard to see in there, but you can see already that it's just a wider tone. Now... Um, I alternate between using like a powder pad and using my little foundation um, sponge. So just tap a little bit onto it. It's getting a little bit empty. I do have a new one somewhere. Probably should have prepared that earlier. Put it on your little pad there and dab away. So the key is with powder it can tend to dry out already dry skin. Duh. Um, so by applying it with your moistened sponge you're giving it still a bit of moisture while setting the foundation and everything in as well so it sort of works as a two-way thing. Does that make any sense? So I find the translucent powder is really good because it, it really does make a difference in setting the makeup. It's so much less likely to slide. So if you need something that lasts all day, um, it's pretty good. There's probably better ones out there than even the Savvy, but I found just from like the pharmacist or whatever, there's a cheaper powder, it does the job. And for pale skin, it's hard to find relatively cheap stuff that suits 
what we need. Again, it's all about blending. Oops, got that in my brow. Remember to be particularly delicate with the area under your eye because it's fairly um, sensitive skin under there, so you don't want to be like pounding away at it. <laughs> Okay, that's not looking too bad. So again, I'm trialing a new, um, the, what is it? The color highlighting, color and highlighting kit by Maybelline. I love new makeup, it's so shiny. Um, normally for my bronzer, I use the Savvy Mineral Baked Bronzer, which it's not zooming in again. Let's try that. <laughs> there it is which has a combination of the browns, the golds, and a little bit of pink as well. I find that's great. Um, again, cheap from the chemist or pharmacist, um, or price line. Um, so I'm gonna try, I don't know quite how these will look on my skin. <laughs> try a bit of the purple maybe. What do we think? Does that clash with the red? Maybe I'll go the light pink. So really light. Nice. It's quite subtle and nice. Nice, Gary. I'm liking that. I'll just dust my brush off and then I'll try a little bit of the highlighter and see how that goes. If you don't use highlighter, I recommend starting. It is just a bomb. Again, when you have pale, sort of dry, dull skin, highlighter just helps lift it that much more too. It helps you give, helps give you more of a, a glow It's coming up a little bit dark on my nose. <laughs> Might fix it. Okay, it's not too bad. That's definitely not as light as what I'm used to. So I'm just going to blend it with the one that I have been using again, Savvy. So they have not in any way sponsored this. They wouldn't even know who I was, but I do like a lot of their products. That has a goldish hue to it. Um, and I find that to be a really good little highlighter. So just pop a little bit on your brush. On your chin, a bit on your cupid's bow. So sometimes I don't put highlighter on my forward but every now and then I do if I just want a little tiny little bit of a glow if my skin's having a particularly flat dry dull day and there we go highlighter makes so much more of a difference it's something I get comments on a lot since I started doing so do it <laughs> And the fun part about highlighter is it ends up all over you. <laughs> Yay! My hands now want to have a nice healthy glow. Um, lips. So because I've got dry lips, I tend to put a tiny dab of moisturizer on. 
I'm just do the taste now. If you need to just dab off any excess skin or stuff, just use a makeup wipe. I really need to exfoliate my lips a bit more actually, because they tend to accumulate the dry skin, which they're rather dry today. Hmm. Just apply a little bit more of that moisturizer on. I'm just using my Nivea. Alternatively, you can use an actual lip balm, but I've run out, so moisturizer it is. Um, okay, I alternate all the time with more, um, lips, stuff, lipsticks, lip balms, you name it. I alternate with MAC, Maybelline, L'Oreal, CoverGirl, they all have good ones, so depending on what you're needing. Some of them dry your lips out more than others too, so um, I love... I'm loving the Superstay Matte Inks from Maybelline. Um, this one is Loyalist 05, the colour, and it's a nice natural look. So I'll show you. It looks sort of like that. So I'm going to use it as a bit of a base and then I'll add a, a deeper colour. So as you can see, it's come out, it's actually looking a little bit darker in, on the screen, on the camera, but um, in real life it's a little bit lighter than that. I don't know if the lighting makes a difference. So it's looking a little bit more orange on cam, but it's more pink in real life. Um, I purchased this one this week as well, it's Voyager in the same range. Um, I have no idea what it looks like on. This is literally a first try. So we're going to put it on and see what happens. I'm then going to try a little bit. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of a reddish hue. Um, it is C. I'm actually not sure who came up with this one. But it's 007 Say My Name. I think, I think it's L'Oreal. Could be wrong. I could be way off track there. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm just going to dab it a little bit. Even cover girl, what an A. Now I just need to tidy up that end a little bit. So to give your lips a bit of extra protection and a glossy look as well, like if you want the matte look, cool. If you want to add a bit of a gloss, you can use a, a clear gloss. I'm just using like the Max Factor conditioner at the moment, which comes with another one of their long Superstay um, lipsticks. Um, but yes, so I just put that over the top. So it's blending my layers together. Oh, spot 
push that up a little bit. <laughs> Giving that a really rich colour and a nice bit of gloss. Um, so normally if I go a really bold eye, I don't always go bold lips. If I'm doing a photo shoot or some modelling or whatever, I'll go a bit more of a bold lip as well because it photographs well. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much the look. So you've got your red and then your red palette from Rimmel which I'm liking a couple of different blends of the lip colour I don't always blend the different colours sometimes I just use one colour and be done with it but you can get really cool combinations if you combine them I often use my MAC as well as a good base because it does last a long time can sometimes cause a bit of peeling if you use more than one layer but um just depends on what you use and I find if you put more of that glossy layer or the conditioner over the top it helps eliminate some of that as well yeah so that's pretty much it that's the look for today combined with my crazy bed hair look bit of a contrast to the pale freckly skin as of earlier <laughs> Um, and then I'll just dress up with a couple of accessories. I'm not as big into accessories as, say, my mum. She loves her bling. She's a bit of a magpie. I tend to just do more makeup and less bling. Um, I'm loving my new earrings from Colette at the moment. Colette by Colette Heyman. Um, they had these a few weeks back on sale and I love them. They're really suiting my hair tones at the moment. You can get it in. <laughs> what is going on? Maybe I've got it in the wrong ear. Let's try that again. I find tassel earrings work particularly well with short pixie hair. So if you're wanting a little bit more length to your look, um, they work really well. So yeah, that's my look. Um, the dog is currently sleeping on my scarf that I was going to show you. I don't know if I can pull it out from his butt. <laughs> Excuse me, dig. Okay, this is a little silver scarf I purchased. I think it was $3 from Kmart. Good old Kmart. That will help dress up any outfit. Little scarves and accessories like that. And yeah, that's my look for the day. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll probably post some more. And I'll start doing some more on fashion and um, styling as well. As that's something I get asked all the time. So yeah, thanks so much, guys.